there is a police-involved shooting in Chicago that's starting to make some major headlines right now. And I'm telling you, I mean, every time we go into an election season, this happens because there are many police-involved shootings. That's America. Um, and that doesn't mean the cops are guilty of anything. It's just America, especially in Chicago. But what happens in an election year, mark my words, is they find a case, they put it on loop, and it becomes an issue in the presidential race. Maybe this will be that case, maybe it won't, but you tell me. Uh, here are the facts. The man's mother, he was a, a, I think, high school senior, says that they shot her son, quote, like an animal. Police body cam video just released yesterday shows the police officers firing over and over, 96 shots in 41 seconds. According to Chicago's Civilian Office of Police Accountability, better known as COPA, there is a reason that there were so many shots unleashed by the officers, and that is that the officers were shot at first by the suspect. This group, COPA, investigates police shootings for the city. We're gonna walk you through the details as they stand right now, and we have the videotape, so I encourage the listening audience to go to youtube.com slash Megyn Kelly and watch this with your own eyes. Uh, the video matters here. The shooting happened on March 21st, so very recent. It involved 26-year-old Dexter Reed. Okay, so not high school, just out of. According to COPA, police stopped Reed, they said, for not wearing a seatbelt. Reed's car windows were heavily tinted, so it's unclear right now how they might have seen Reed not wearing the seatbelt. Police in unmarked vehicles, some in plain clothes, and some wearing vests that read police on them, approached the vehicle. They asked Reed to roll down his window, driver's side, and unlock the door. You will see him, we're gonna show you this tape in a second, roll down his window all the way before beginning to roll it back up. An officer asks, what are you doing? Reed responds, I'm not doing nothing. He then partially rolls the window back up, even as a female officer tells him over and over, roll it down. After that, he does not comply with demands from the officers. At least two officers take out guns and point them at Reed while giving him orders. The female officer walks backward as she says, open the door now. Then shots are heard. The video we're about to play for you runs about 90 seconds long. It's from the view of the female officer's body cam video. I'll describe it for the listening audience when we come back on. Try to listen to what you hear first. We warn you, the video is graphic. Roll the windows down. Roll the window down, man. Roll the window down. What are you doing? Roll this one down. Roll that one down, too. Roll that one down. Hey, don't roll the window up. I'm don't roll, roll the window up. Hey, okay. Do not roll the window up. Hey, do not fucking roll Unlock the door. Unlock the doors Open now. The fucking door. Unlock the doors Open now. The fucking door. Unlock the doors the door. now. Hey, Open the door now. Open the door now. Open the door now. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Fernando Neighbors! Fernando Neighbors! 10-1! 10-1! Okay, so it's hard to see in that video, even when we slowed it down, the initial gunfire and which direction it came from. For the listening audience who see him, he rolled back up that window, not all the way, as they're telling him, roll it down and roll down the other one too, which he did not comply with. You hear them telling him, unlock the door, and the police officer's got her hand on the door handle trying to pull it and it remains locked. And you do hear um, Reed say inside, I'm trying to, but over the course of several seconds, it doesn't happen. And you can hear the police's escalation. Uh, you can hear their concern rising as they begin to back away 
from that door as they no longer can see very well inside the car because the window is gone, not all the way back up, but mostly. And then you hear gunfire. Again, though, in that video, even when we slowed it down, you cannot see from where the initial gunfire came. COPA, which again, investigates shootings in Chicago, says the video and ballistic evidence point to Reed, the man inside, firing first at cops. A body cam video from a different officer shows that at one point, while all the shots were being fired, Reed gets out of his vehicle and goes to the back of his SUV. The video shows him getting shot repeatedly, so we're not gonna air it. But we made a series of full screens, meaning pictures, so you can see what the officers saw. In this one, you see Reed crouching down as he goes up the side of the vehicle. This is after the shooting had begun. In this image, he makes it to the back of the vehicle. His arms do not appear up for what it's worth. In this image, you see him fall backward as more gunfire rings out. Eventually, he falls to the ground. At that point, officers point their guns at him and order him not to move as he lies still. One officer remarking that Reed is still breathing while they search him for a gun. He is put in handcuffs. He was transported to a hospital where he later died. A Chicago police officer was shot in the arm. Per COPA, a gun was recovered on the front passenger seat of Reed's car. Chicago Sun-Times, citing a high-ranking law enforcement source, says Reed fired 11 rounds, and his gun was empty when it was recovered from inside the vehicle. Several of the police officers seen on the body cam footage are black, as was Mr. Reed, because, of course, the news is already making an issue out of race. And one officer who was seen lying on the grass with this arm injury is also black. Now for how the story is being covered by some media outlets. The Washington Post coverage includes this photo of Reed. Reed is seen smiling during a graduation ceremony. The Associated Press also included that photo in its coverage, which is fine. Those pictures were put out by the family. I'm sure that's how they want him remembered. But the reporting did not include Reed's recent mugshots or even any background on his arrests, which may prove relevant. An outlet called Block Club Chicago, which bills itself as a nonprofit news org dedicated to covering Chicago's diverse neighborhoods, quote unquote, did good reporting on this, citing past info from the Chicago Sun-Times. They report that Reed was arrested twice last year. In April, 2023, he was charged with retail theft. The charge was later dropped, according to the Sun-Times. In mid-July, Reed was charged with aggravated unlawful use of a weapon without a concealed carry card when officers said they found him with a loaded gun at the Windy City Smokeout, according to the Sun-Times. He was facing several gun-related charges that were pending at the date of this encounter. Did the officers know anything about these arrests before pulling him over? That remains unclear. Again, police say he was pulled over for not wearing a seatbelt. Officers involved have been placed now on 30-day administrative leave. Their union says these cops responded heroically. The lawyer representing Reed's family is calling for these tactical units to be disbanded because they have been, quote, terrorizing the community. Back with me now, Phil Holloway and Viva Fry. Guys, I want to start with this, which we just got our hands on. It is surveillance video from a neighbor's house. And it gives us a different angle. What you're gonna see, I'm just gonna describe it because it's hard to it's hard to see, is the two cops on the left side of the screen are on the passengers. All right, okay, no, sorry, are on the um the driver's side. The two cops on the right side of the screen are on the passenger side. And it appears that you can see some sort of looks to me like gun smoke mm. come out of that passenger window. You can see it lingering the in the air. The cop falls backward onto the grass right next to it, and the car tries to get away. If that's what we think it is, it should be ball game. That should be the end of it. I mean, it's uncertain. These things get played over and over. Um, but this cop looks like he's been shot through the passenger side window of this car, and it appears to be on tape via a neighbor's surveillance window. We've covered enough of these, though, to know it's going to be analyzed frame by frame by frame. And so far, the family's denying that this is the way it went down, uh, suggesting these cops are to blame. So um, your first reaction looking at it, Phil, I'll start with you on this one. 
Yeah. So look, I mean, as a former law enforcement officer, what I see on that video that the most recent one you showed, I see uh, the cop getting shot out the passenger door. Uh, it is it is pretty clear. But the common denominator in all of these cases, Megan, is non-compliance with police commands, right? You can you can pick apart whether, you know, maybe they should have stopped him, maybe they shouldn't have stopped him, but the common denominator is non-compliance with police commands. In the United States, there's a case called Graham versus Connor, and it's sort of the standard that we use to assess whether or not police shootings were reasonable, and it tells us that we are not supposed to use the 2020 uh hindsight vision to, to analyze these things. Put yourself in the place of an officer on this chaotic scene where things are dynamic, they're fluid, they're rapidly changing. And then the question is, would a reasonable officer under like or similar circumstances use that degree of force? And so I put myself there in that scene with all that stuff going down and I see a a colleague of mine being shot through the through the passenger door. Yes, I'm going to return fire. I'm going to return fire until that threat has been terminated and neutralized and is no longer a danger to me, any other officers, or the community. It's a legitimate shooting, and the media may play it otherwise, but absolutely, this was justified 100%. Viva, here's some of the reaction. The family's attorney uh, comes out and says, these plainclothes officers did not announce they were police officers. Okay, footage does show many, show many in plain clothes, but some were wearing vests with the word police written all over them. He called on the Chicago mayor to disband the tactical units that have been terrorizing the communities. He asked how many, how many more young black and brown men need to die before this city will change. And then the Chicago mayor, this far lefty, Brandon Johnson, weighs in with the following statement. As mayor... And as a father raising a family, including two black boys on the west side of Chicago, I am personally devastated to see yet another young black man lose his life during an interaction with the police. I, if, if what we've just seen holds up, that is incredibly irresponsible. Megan, I was I was going to make the sick joke that, you know, j just see what LeBron James is tweeting about this. And then, you know, the opposite is true. Mm. You remember that's the, the cop who shot the woman as she was about to stab someone, saved a kid's life and got North demonized Carolina. for it. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I will always wait a little bit longer before taking an opinion because it could be that the first shots might have been from the cops on one side shooting to the other and it's just massive confusion. Some people could hypothesize that they planted the gun afterwards to frame the guy. I don't know what, you know, until you know definitively what the facts are, um, you should, you know, hold off forming an opinion. But if it turns out the person fires first on police officers, okay, 46 shots, 72 shots, however many shots they shot, if somebody opens fire on the cops, A, uh, th they've relinquished any expectation to live anymore, and B, you can't have these lefty uh, progressive politicians whipping people up into race-baiting frenzies. It's, it's absolutely irresponsible, but it's done on purpose. All I'll say, in this case, I'll wait a little bit more, see who fired first. I think I know what I think, but they should release the body cam footage sooner than later to at least not allow the media to run with fake narratives for extended periods of time. By the time they release it, everyone's already formed their opinion. Do you owe back taxes? Pandemic relief is now over. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay-up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. Don't waive your rights and speak with them on your own. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe 10 grand or 10 million, they can help you. Whether it's business or personal taxes, even if you have the means to pay or you're on a fixed income, they can help finally resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Call 1-800-245-6000 for a private free consultation, or visit tnusa.com slash Megan. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.